University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Oxford plays Cambridge tonight with two student teams straining at the leash, ready to show an anxious nation that education has not been dumbed down. Now, founded in 1624, Pembroke College, Oxford takes its name from the third Earl of Pembroke, conjectured by some to have been the object of Shakespeare's affections in the majority of his sonnets. The writer and lexicographer Samuel Johnson was a student there until his money ran out. The chemist James Smithson, founder of the Smithsonian Institute, went there, as did the jurist Sir William Blackstone, and more recently, the editor of The Guardian, Catherine Viner, and the politicians Maria Eagle and Lord Heseltine. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote much of his account of Middle Earth when a fellow there. Representing around 600 students and with an average age of 23, let's meet the Pembroke team. Hello, I'm Conor McGurk. I'm from Cedric in Cumbria, and I'm studying Earth Sciences. Hello, I'm Tom, I'm from London, and I'm studying history and Spanish. And their captain? Hi, I'm Catherine, I'm from Birmingham, and I'm reading for a DPhil in theology. Hi, I'm Louis, I'm from Kingston-upon-Thames, and I'm reading for a DPhil in history. <laughs> Downing College, Cambridge, was founded in 1800 and named after the 17th century baronet, who also gave his name to Downing Street. It was funded by his estate, much to the annoyance of his surviving relatives who did what they could to keep the money for themselves. Alumni include the Python John Cleese and the comedy writer Andy Hamilton. The filmmaker Michael Apted was there, as was the theatre director Trevor Nunn and the cricketer Mike Atherton. Representing around 650 students with an average age of 20, let's meet the Downing College team. Hi, I'm Fergus O'Dowd. I'm from Winchester and I study linguistics. Hi, I'm Jane O'Connor. I'm from Dublin and I'm studying human, social and political sciences. And there, Captain? Hello, I'm Yambo Yin. I'm originally from Beijing, but I've lived a number of years now in Birmingham and I'm studying physics. Hello, I'm Felix Prutton. I'm from Woodson in Norfolk and I'm studying natural sciences. You probably know the rules better than I do, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first start of a ten. What six-letter word links a maritime province of Canada, a political treatise of 1513, a musical performer born in Minneapolis in... Downing O'Connor. Prince. Prince is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on cities that in recent years have been the start or grand départ of the Tour de France. In each case, name the city from the description. Firstly... The capital of North Rhine-Westphalia, about 50 kilometres north of Cologne. It's associated with a style of beer known as Altbier. Um, Dusseldorf? Correct. A major city of the Netherlands, secondly, that forms a triangle with Amsterdam and Rotterdam. It gives its name to a series of international treaties of the early 18th century. Uh, Utrecht. Correct. And finally, a city on the River Eyre, the birthplace of Alan Bennett and John Atkinson Grimshaw. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, Leeds. It was Leeds, yes, in 2014. <laughs> Another starter question. Transverse formed where wind blows constantly from one direction and longitudinal, which are elongated in the direction of the Downing Prutton. Waves. No, you lose five points of the prevailing wind are two types of what natural formation found in arid regions and along coastlines. One form is the small crescent-shaped barkan. Pembroke McGurk. Dunes. Dunes is correct, yes. <laughs> so your first bonuses, Pembroke, are on horticulture. Used extensively in horticulture, which bog or peat moss has cells specialised for the retention of water? I need the Greek-derived name. Sorry. 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 Sorry.
Denoting a plant that's been grown for a particular attribute, what term is a contraction of words meaning to till land and something that is different? Any idea? I don't know. Uh, pass. It's a cultivar. Right, ten points for this. The bacterium Streptococcus mutans is a significant contributor to what localised disease of the human oral cavity, often known by a sick... Downing Prutton. Tonsillitis. No. no, you lose five points. Often known by a six-letter Latin name meaning dry Plaque. rot. Oh. Pembroke Perry. Plaque. No, it's tooth decay, caries or cavities. Right, ten points for this, then. Nathan Zuckerman is the narrator of several novels by which US author? Zuckerman most recently appeared in Exit Ghost in 2007, and his most notable narrations include The Human Stain and American Pastoral. Pembroke Morris. Uh, Philip Roth. Correct. You take the lead, and these bonuses are on architectural styles and movements in the words of Harry Mount in his book, A Lust for Window Sills. In each case, give the term from the description. Firstly, think twirly-whirly, think wedding cake decoration. Curves, garlands and ribbons, think of 1720 to 1760. Think not very much of it in Britain. Rococo? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Rococo? Correct. Secondly, a form of Gothic architecture that's rare everywhere except Britain. Its spires gave exclamation points to a skyline obscured by all-consuming damp greyness. Mm. Yeah, Neo-Gothic? No, it's perpendicular. And finally, the general idea was to connect the country's social and moral health to the qualities of its architecture and design. The answer came, Ruskin thought, from a society full of creative, skillful workers. Oh, so it's Ruskin's goal. Um... That is, is that just Gothic Revival? Yeah, yeah. Gothic Revival? No, it's Arts and Crafts. Oh. Right, we're going to take a picture around. For your picture starter, you'll see a map showing the major roads of a European country. Ten points if you can give me the name of the country. Uh, Downing O'Dowd. Portugal. Portugal is correct, yes. <laughs> a recent survey by the World Economic Forum considered Portugal's road infrastructure one of the best in Europe. Picture bonuses show the major roads of three more countries named among the best in the world by that survey. Simply name each country. Firstly... Australia. Austria. 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 Austria is correct. Secondly... Denmark. Denmark is correct. And finally... Oh, that's the Netherlands, Netherlands, right? The Netherlands. That is the Netherlands, yes. <laughs> right, and I'll start the question. The name of what common foodstuff derives ultimately from a Greek word meaning antidote to venom? The word in question was formerly used in a medicinal sense, but now indicates a syrup produced in the process of refining sugar. Ah, uh, molasses. Downing in. Molasses? No. Anyone want to buzz from Pembroke or not, or shall I give you the answer? Pembroke McGuck. Starch. No, it's treacle. <laughs> Ten points for this. The father of the symphony and the father of the string quartet are epithets sometimes applied uh, to which... Downing in. Joseph Haydn. Haydn is correct, yes. Right, your bonuses this time are on a heavy metal album down in college. The five-word title of which 1982 album appears in the Book of Revelation after the words, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count what? I need the title of the album and the name of the band. I don't know. No, we don't know, I'm afraid. It's The Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. <laughs> 
Ever heard of them? No. <laughs> <I'm afraid> <laughs> <not>. <laughs> Secondly, for five points, the four words that appear before Thy Kingdom Come in St Luke's Gospel form the title of which track from the number of the beast concerning a condemned man? Is it four words? No, no, it's four words before. Four letters. 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 Four no, we don't know that either, sorry. That was the prisoner. Right, ten points for this. Coined in 2003 and indicating an automated Turing test, what seven-letter neologism denotes an authentication system devised... Pembroke McGurk. Capacha. I'll accept that. Capture is correct, yes. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on biology, Pembroke College. From Greek words meaning arrangement and manage, what term is used in a broad sense to denote the identification, classification and naming of biological organisms? Cladistics. Cladistics, are you sure? Okay. Okay. Um, cladistics? No, it's taxonomy. From Greek words meaning branch and tribe, respectively, give either term that indicates the system of classifying organisms based on their evolutionary relationships, as opposed to present-day similarities. So, phylogeny. Phylogeny. Phylogeny? All cladistics is correct, yes. <laughs> and finally, born 1707, which Swedish naturalist is often called the father of modern biological classification? Linnaeus. Correct. <laughs> right. Ten points for this level, pegging 50 points apiece. Known as the laughing philosopher because of his belief that one should seek euthymia or cheerfulness, which ancient philosopher of Abdera apparently derived his principles from Leucippus and developed atomism as a major philosophical... Pembroke Lambert. Epicurus. No, you lose five points. Major philosophical theory. Uh, Downing Yin. Democritus. Democritus is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on a river down in college. There are several rivers in Britain with the name Avon. The one sometimes known as Shakespeare's Avon rises on the Northamptonshire uplands near which village, which was the site of a decisive battle of 1645? Naseby? Naseby, I think, is around there. Naseby? is correct. About 30 miles southwest of Naseby, the Avon flows through which county town? The location of a well-known castle. The royal favourite Piers Gaveston was executed nearby in 1312. Warwick. Correct. The Avon joins the Seven at which Gloucestershire town? It is the site of a prominent Norman abbey and of a Yorkist victory in 1471. Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. Uh, is, is there an abbey in Brightwich? I'm not sure. Could be. Oh, it's Tewksbury. Tewksbury. Tewksbury's correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Whose grave in Kensal Green bears the dates 1805 to 1881 above the inscription, a notable nurse who cared for the sick... Pembroke Morris. Florence Nightingale. No, you lose five points. A notable nurse who cared for the sick and wounded in the West Indies, Panama and on the battlefields of the Crimea. Downing Yim. Mary Seacole. Mary Seacole is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time down in college are on unpaired words, that is, words that are negative in form, but whose positive equivalents are absent or rare, for example, unkempt, disgruntled and gormless. In each case, give the word from the definition. Firstly, a Latin-derived adjective meaning impossible to efface or erase, it's commonly applied to stationary items such as pencils or ink. Indelible? Indelible. Indelible, Indelible is correct. Secondly, a six-letter word meaning disorderly or not amenable to control. The historian Macaulay used it to describe the Scottish Parliament in the reign of William III. Unruly. 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 Unruly.
For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music. For ten points, name its composer. Downing Yin. Beethoven? It is Beethoven. Do you happen to know what it was? Um, I recognise, but I'm not sure what it was. <laughs> it was part of the Egmont Overture, so... Well done. A draft of the Egmont Overture is one of many autographed manuscripts housed in the British Library as part of the collection of the Austrian writer Stefan Zweig. For your bonuses, you'll hear three more works, each of which can be found in manuscript form in that collection. Firstly, for five points, name the composer of this sacred work. Handel? No, it's Bach. Oh. Secondly, the composer of this work, which was premiered in 1912. Yeah, it's not Stravinsky? No, that was Schoenberg. Oh, uh, and finally, name the composer of this opera. Verdi? No, that's Delibes, the flower duet, oh, made famous that. by commercials, of course. <laughs> Right, ten points for this. The self-strengthening movement was launched towards the end of which Chinese dynasty? It... Downing Yin. Qing. Qing is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses, Downing, are on the 13th century churchman Robert Gross Test, a leading figure in the development of the scientific method. Firstly, in 1235, Gross Test was elected bishop of which cathedral city, a terminus of the Foss Way? This is the Foss Way. The Foss Way is... Which one's that? Is that Lincoln? Can it be Lincoln? I think Lincoln. Go for it. Lincoln. Lincoln is correct. Born in about 1215 and known by the epithet Dr. Mirabilis, which English philosopher was influenced yeah. by Gross Tester's scientific approach? Yeah. Francis Bacon. No, it was Roger Bacon. Oh, good lord. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Gross Test is noted for his translations and commentaries on the works of which ancient Greek philosopher? These included the physics and the Nicomachean. Ethics. Aristotle. 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 Aristotle is correct. Right, ten points for this. After a 19th century German physician, what alternative name is given to schistosomiasis, a tropical ah. disease? Downing Yin. Bilharzia. Bilharzia is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on sedimentary rocks. After an 18th century French geologist, what term denotes sedimentary rocks dominated by the mineral calcium magnesium carbonate? And by extension, an alpine range formed at this rock. Uh, no, schist, is it? Schist, no. Could schist be alpine? I don't know. Um, um, what bits of the Alps can you name? Oh, no, no, it'll be. It'll be so is the, is the kind of the Alps named after the yes, rock? Yes, yeah, yeah. I think we better have an answer, schist. please. Schist? No, it's dolomite. Oh, oh, From oh, the wow. Italian for gravel, what term denotes a coarse grained clastic rock composed? A broken angular rock fragments enclosed in a fine grained matrix. Is, is that pottery? No. Um, I'll nominate. What? I'll nominate. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Nominato Dowd. Pozzolan? No, it's Breccia. And finally, Jasper, Chert, Agate, and Flint are all very fine grained versions of what mineral? It consists primarily of silica. Quartz? Mm. Quartz? 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 Correct. Right, ten points for this. Which European capital city lies closest to the 30th meridian east? The same meridian passes near to St. Petersburg and Alexandria and to the east of Istanbul. Downing in. Sophia? No, anyone like to buzz from Pembroke? Pembroke Perry. Minsk? No, it's Kiev. Right, another starter question. Seven years after his party's formation in the aftermath of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, who became the first Republican president of the United States? 
Embrick Lambert. Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Almost couldn't say it. <laughs> but you're going to clam up there for a second. <laughs> right, here are your bonuses. They're on literary oxymorons. In describing an erotic encounter in a novel of 1940, which US Nobel laureate used the phrase warm, scalding coolness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hemingway? Yeah, he's a bit. Yeah, definitely. Hemingway? It was. In an unfinished picaresque satire, which romantic poet used the expression melancholy merriment? Unfinished. Keith Byron? Keith Byron. Byron? It was Byron in Don Juan. And finally, which play by Shakespeare includes the line, Good night, good night, parting is such sweet sorrow? Romeo and Juliet. Correct. We're going to take a picture round again now. Uh, for your picture starter, you'll see a painting. Ten points if you can name the artist. Pembrook Morris. Brack. No, anyone like to buzz from Downing? Downing, yes. Salvador Dali. No, it's Holman Hunt. It's the scapegoat. Right, ten points for this. The short name of which major currency results when one concatenates the single letter codes of the amino acids tyrosine, glutamic acid, and asparagine? Downing Ian. Lira? No, anyone likes to buzz from Pembroke? It's yen. Ten points for this. What given name links five early poems by Wordsworth, the fossil remains of a hominid discovered in Ethiopia in 1974, and a film of 2014 directed by Luc Besson? Downing O'Connor. Lucy. Lucy is correct. <laughs> right, you'll recall that we had the picture starter a moment ago, so you get the picture bonuses. You'll recall that we saw the scapegoat, which is part of the Lady Lever Art Gallery in Port Sunlight on the Wirral. The Lady Lever Gallery has a notable collection of pre-Raphaelite works. Your picture bonuses are three more of them. I want the name of the artist in each case, please. Firstly, this one. Is it Rossetti? Might be Monet. I'm not really sure. Go for it. Which one? Rossetti or Monet? Dante Cameron Rossetti. No, that is Waterhouse, the Decameron. Secondly, this one, please. I don't know. Go for Rossetti. Rossetti. No, that's by Burne Jones. Okay. The Guiling of Merlin. And finally. That doesn't look like it. John Everett Millet. Yes. The Black Bands Booker. Right, ten points for this. In chemistry, which three elements are found in the four mil group? Uh, Downing in. Um, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Correct. Your bonuses are on science in the 17th century this time down in college. The principle that every point on a wave front may itself be regarded as the source of secondary waves is named after which Dutch mathematician and astronomer born 1629? Uh, Christian Huygens. Correct. What timekeeping element was used in the type of clock mechanism patented by Huygens in 1657? Again. No, no, it's not. It's 17th century. Sorry. Um, it's, 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 it's called spring. Oh, is it a, like a biometric? Is that what pendulums? Is that what's patented? It's, it's the timekeeping structure. Oh, the pendulum. It's probably oh, not pendulum. Okay, a pendulum. Correct. And two years earlier, in 1655, Huygens had discovered which moon of Saturn? Oh, good moon. Good moon of Saturn. Titan. Titan's a moon of Saturn. It's very big. Titan. Titan is correct. <laughs> There's about three and a bit minutes to go, and there's ten points at stake for this. What four letters end words meaning the projecting part of the head of a dog, the spout of a hose or pipe, ah. to confuse by... Downing in. Z-Z-L-E. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on Latin terminology. In each case, give the full term from the description. All three answers have two words with the first word in common. Firstly a two-word term that implies peaceful coexistence between two contending parties, for example, in international relations. It means way of living. Um, modus, modus, something? Modus vivendi. Is it modus, modus vivendi? Modus vivendi. Correct. 
Secondly, a term used in propositional logic. It means method of affirming. Modus. Is that no, modus? no, it's not. It's method. No, but it's the same word in common. It's modus, something like that. Modus. Uh, how do you mean? Modus. You can, okay, I'm going to nominate you. No, no, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> because um, I don't know. Um, tollens, did you say? Yeah. Modus tollens? No, it's ponens, did you say? Oh, um, ponens no, was the answer. You didn't say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, <whatever. laughs> So you don't get the points. Correct. And finally, a term used in criminology to describe a distinct manner of working associated with a particular criminal. Modus operandi. Correct. Ten points for this. Bohemian, Danish, Swedish and French were stages of which major European period? Of Downing in. The Thirty Years' War. The Thirty Years' War is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on glaciers. A major tourist attraction, the Perito Moreno Glacier, Lies in a national park close to the border between which two countries? Argentina and Chile. Oh, that's probably true. Yeah. Argentina and Chile. Correct. The Vatna Glacier covers approximately eight percent of which Nordic country? Okay. Iceland. Correct. Which glacier in New Zealand was explored in 1865 by the geologist Julius von Haast, who named it after the Austrian emperor at the time? What was the date? Oh, it's the um, Franz Josef. No, no. Yes. Yeah. Franz Josef. Franz Josef is correct. Okay. Ten points for this. In human anatomy, the head of which bone articulates with the acetabulum? Downing Yim. Oh, gosh. Uh, the humerus. No. Pembroke, one of you may buzz. Pembroke Perry. Femur. Femur is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on cinema, Pembroke College. In each case, name the film from the description. All three English titles contain the same short adjective. Firstly, a 1970 film by Francois Truffaut set during the 18th century. It concerns a boy found in a forest who has apparently grown up without human contact. Mm. Mm. The Savage Child? Uh, I, the, uh, the, I can't accept that. It's the wild child, oh. L'Enfant Sauvage is what it's called in French. <laughs> and secondly, an Ingmar Bergman film of 1957 about a scientist who travels by car with his daughter-in-law from Stockholm to Lund. Any ideas? Yeah, but if you don't know... Pardon? Yeah, pass. That's wild strawberries. And finally, I've got the wrong... Pembroke College, Oxford have 75 points, Downing College, Cambridge have 230. Well, you had the lead early on, Pembroke, at least. <laughs> thank you very much for taking part. I think we're going to be saying goodbye to you, though, but thank you very much for joining us. And Downing, that's a terrific score. Look forward to seeing you in the next stage of the competition. Congratulations. I hope you can join us next time for another first round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Pembroke College, Oxford. Bye. It's goodbye from Downing College, Cambridge. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>